Welcome back, welcome back, welcome back to Disco Elysium. From where we left off, I remember we just finished talking to these two fine gentlemen. One a nationalist and one a uh, old man. Straight up old man. Uh, we're going to take a look around some more. Uh, talk to the rep before we talk to the union. Interesting. What do you got? Listen, boy. I don't start trouble, I fix it. Okay. Good for you, bud. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Back to a flirt torch, lines the wall. All right, here we go. Hey, what's that noise down there? Ooh. It's that boy. You see a young man on a balcony nursing a cigarette. His eyes have been following you for a while. Not looking for any trouble, officer. No trouble for me, I just want to know what's going on here. I don't want to be seen talking to the gendarmerie if that's okay. I just want to finish my cigarette. Don't let him go. This could be your witness. The balcony has a great view of the whole thing. Actually, the gendarmerie really needs to talk to you. Is it really that important? Alright, but make it quick. Once I finish this cigarette, I have to run. Looks like you've got a good view of the whirling backyard. Can you tell me anything about the hanging? I can tell that you finally got him down. Thank you. It was quite a disturbing sight, even by Martinet's standards. What were you doing last Sunday? Oh. You already asked me that, didn't you? Did you? No, not you two. Some more muscular type. And when did you speak to this more muscular gentleman? Last week? I don't know. Look. You didn't answer the question. What were you doing last Sunday? <sighs> I had a friend over. What kind of friend? It was my Sunday friend. Makes sense. Friends are nice on Sunday. You don't have to work. You can just spend time with pals, watching rugby. And drinking beer. What's your friend's real name? Did he see something? He doesn't reply, gesturing no with his cigarette. Under the gray sky, the neighboring windows are streaked with rain. Can you tell me your name? My name? 
My name is Martin Martinez. Martin Martinez? Good local name. Let's Damn go it. with that. All right. We'll talk later. No. We won't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really need to get going. Time to bring out your secret charm. Tears and beg him. Show him your emotional side. Throw him... No, for God's sake, I don't want you to cry. Listen, I really have to go. Good luck with the investigation. No. I'm reloading. He's gone. No point in running. Tenements like these often have multiple exits. If he doesn't want to talk to us, then he'll know how to hide himself. He could be a witness. Him or his Sunday friend. There has to be a way of getting... A stone. Like... A stone. There's a key beneath. This must be for the front door. Pity doesn't have the apartment number on it. We'll just have to go in and see. says number 11 no, this door has been suppressed. closed with a paddle it's a solid lump of metal but the shackle is deeply corroded a solid pair of chain cutters would make short work of it some chain cutters here to cut the shackle why would we want to break into some random citizen's apartment I don't know just seems like something we could do the lieutenant looks at you for a I suppose if one were committed to it there's a pair of chain cutters in Some the walking stops abruptly, but you can feel tension on the other side. Sounded like a woman, a woman's shoes, a poor communard from the looks of it. The room is barely bigger than a closet. Huh? What? This is the police. Open up. Do I have to open the door? Do you have a warrant? I'm not obligated to open the door if you don't have a warrant. Let's go. We don't have a reason to get inside that apartment. Just need to ask questions, Kim. How are we supposed to ask questions? Give me a moment. The cold never does any good for my bronchitis. <laughs> Are you all right? Should I call a doctor? I'm fine. Fine. Don't you worry about me. <laughs> You're still worried. It's very worrying. Now, what do you want from me, policeman? 
I have a few questions about those apartments. Ask away, policeman. She mumbles some kind of a response, then hacks something into her handkerchief. Who are you? I'm no one. Just an old woman who cleans these hallways. Do you live here? If you can call it living. I have a little room upstairs right next to the coal room. It's barely bigger than a closet. But I don't complain, no. I have my bed and my aching bones to keep me company. And that's all I need from this world. I'm looking for Martin Martinez. Oh, you'll find plenty of Martins here. Don't you worry. What do you mean? Clean I wasn't brain. joking. Someone played a trick on you. Martin Martinez. Oops. You really did. I thought it was obvious. Anyway, officer, we don't have the witnesses. God damn it. I have high rhetoric. Stop this. How about a young male in his mid-twenties, dark hair, skinny build? A smoker on the balcony? Know where he lives? Yes, yes. I know who you mean. The scrawny boy who's always smoking like the devil, right? Somewhere in the building, a child starts crying. You hear a radio tuned to a talk show and someone taking a shower. What's he in trouble for? No trouble. I just wanted to talk to him. Do you know where he lives? Talk? <laughs> he lives upstairs in room 28. Go to the balcony. It's one of those doors there. He's usually home in the evening. Thank you. We should go check out his apartment on the balcony. See if he's home. Thanks, I'm off. I don't need authority. Let's go to the balcony. Who are you, young lady? The streets will flow red once more. A great torrent rushing down Rue de Esperance. You wait and see. The streets will not flow red with anything. Who are you? I'm Cindy the fucking Skull. What else do you want to know? Date of birth, blood type, the last time I was tested for hep C. Just answer some questions, okay? Ask away, pig man. But I don't promise to answer. That smell coming from her paint bucket. It's not paint. It's heavy fuel oil. Is that heavy fuel oil? Red dyed heavy fuel oil intended for exclusive use in government vehicles, to be precise. What did you think I was using? Aquarelles? Sucked it out of a cop's fuel tank myself. Back in Jamrock. She really did it. She's proud of it too. That's some clever cultural commentary. You ain't seen nothing yet, Piggy Boo. You keep looking off to the side. What are you looking at? The lieutenant is desperately searching for a handkerchief. Hatred, disgust, 
It's difficult to tell which of the two is more present in her girlish features. The woman on the boat does not notice her staring. That is on her. Someone's got to keep an eye on her. The Wild Pines rep? Yes, we should go talk to her. She's a professional negotiator, though. I have the feeling she will be very cooperative while telling us nothing. You should take the lead. Ask her unexpected questions, you know? Do your thing. Don't be afraid to get a bit wacky. Throwing her off is our best bet. Good idea, piggies. Run along now. Fuck her shit up good. Impound that boat while you're at it. I'd like to watch her swim back to Ozon. Do you know anything about the recent murder? I ain't no snitch, Pigstein. Go forth and forage in someone else's shit. No shortage of squealers in these parts. Actually, there is a shortage of people who talk to us in a normal, calm, informative manner. We weren't put on this earth to make your life pleasant, fucko. What are you doing to the wall? Can't you tell? I'm painting a beautiful mural, an aereo graffitio visible from low orbit. I haven't really started it yet. I'm waiting for the right words. So you don't know what to write? Have you ever tried your hand at graffitio? When faced with a blank wall, most people write unimaginative stuff, like pigs go home, and Mono is here. We rarely see pigs round here, though. Just union cats. And my name's not Mona, so... She wants it to be something true and total. I have an opinion on this. Wanna hear it? Yeah? I love public art. Don't mind us. Keep doing what you're doing. Thanks. I'm sure the inspiration will come to me now that I have an official RCM stamp of approval. You've lessened her desire to deface the building. Catch you later, Cindy. Watch your back, Ungulate. You've got eyes on you. Uh-huh, Cindy, uh-huh. All right, here we go. Here we, here we, here we, here we, here we go. Take the jeans. Oh. The rats of the city. Oh god. Kim. What have you done, Kim? Kim, what have you done? What have you done? Oh, ah! Excuse me? I'm just gonna ignore that, Kim. I'm just gonna ignore that. Pretend that didn't happen. It's unfortunate that it always takes away something useful. That isn't just a five pointed star, it's an inverted white pentagram. Cradled in a the star and antlers was developed in the sixth decade of the last century and quickly adopted by Mezov and the Communards during the revolution. Even today, half a century after, the star and antlers retains the ability to evoke hope, disappointment, and fear in equal measure. 
What does it evoke in me? Nothing at all yet. Right now. This door is made of metal and appears to be reinforced. Someone here really values their security. Number 28. This is where the cleaning lady said the smoker on the balcony lives. Let's see if anyone's home. Knock on the door. No one answers. Looks like the young man we are looking for isn't home. I think our best chance to catch him is in the evening. We should return tomorrow after we have finished with our day's work. How about 9 p.m.? Sound good? Sounds good. Tomorrow, 9 p.m. Tomorrow, 9 p.m., right here. Apartment number 28. Good, let's go. Damn. Turns out it's quite tricky finding someone in a big apartment building. Don't worry. You'll get him. Remember, tomorrow. He's probably gone for today. Shadows on the water bringing plants under the calm surface. A striking woman leans against the cabin top of her sailing boat, smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. I'm Joyce. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. Joyce L. What does the L stand for? Baton, my maiden name. RCM. What is that? I'm a little foggy here. Um, I meant you, the Revachol Citizens Militia, the police. Oh. What gave us away? Nothing, honestly. I've said it to every drunk in town, and you're the first one who's responded. What is implied here? That you're a drunk? I'm glad to see you here. Like steel. There is strength there. If she wanted, she could sink her nails deep into your skin. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will, gladly. That is good to hear, madame. 
My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from an unusual medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you of his ultimate competency. It happens quicker than a shooting star. But did the lieutenant just wink at you? How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation, and the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. It's hard to get a read on her precise disposition, but she appears helpful. You're on a boat. Why, yes I am. Not a lot of people on boats, are there? Of course there are. We're on an archipelago, how else are you supposed to get around? Wait, we're on an archipelago? Yes, we are. We are on Le Caillou. Um, Caillou? I thought we were in Revachol. We are. And the city of Revachol is on the island of Le Caillou. Still, I haven't seen anyone else sail a boat around here. I haven't seen anyone else drive a souped-up Coupri Kenema motor carriage either. Actually... That motor carriage has been specially issued to serve as a patrol and pursuit vehicle. It's for crossing long distances in the Greater Revachol Industrial Harbor. It's not a toy. Neither is this. A toy, I mean. It's a machine for crossing long distances in the Bay of Revachol, between the city and the islands. She's having a good time arguing against the law. Too good, perhaps. Does she have a name? The boat? No. It is called Cordelati 19, because that's the type of sloop it is. The word it feels strange. Cool, but such a your beautiful boat really boat deserves a, a name. Problem. Okay. How about Cordelati 19? Why? Because it was manufactured in Revachol East by a company called Cordelati, and its hull is 19 paces long. How about Sleek Fish? What? Because it's sleek and fish-like. I think I'll stick with the factory name, but thank you. Okay, but what kind of boat is it? It's a pleasure craft, a 19 pacer. It also happens to be rated for category one racing. Though these days I mainly use it for business. How do you like it? My slew, I like it a lot. It's the eel's hips, baby. I'm enjoying this part of the interview. It has so little to do with the murder we're investigating. I really do, the lieutenant thinks. Is she thrown off yet? He's looking at the woman, assessing her. Do you have a license for this boat? Officer, I assure you I'm a highly qualified pleasure craft operator. <laughs> Sorry, I just, uh, I got something else I gotta do right now, lady, so, uh... Ah, oh, dang. The crowns of her teeth are porcelain, white as the boat's hull as she smiles. Her nonchalance might be related to something called the Wayfarer Act, a law that says she doesn't need a license. Sly Fox, you're not aggressive enough to harass her further on this. I think I have a hand on the boat thing. Good. Tell me about Wild Pines. What do you do? What we do? I'm afraid I don't speak for Wild Pines as a whole. It, it's a giant undertaking. So what do they do? The Pines' core competency is logistics. Container shipping, freight, that sort of thing. See those airships there, blinking? Those are the shipping side of things. And that is the terminal. Another subdivision deals with energy, oil and gas exploration, offshore platforms. How much money does Wild Pines have? I'm not at liberty to discuss the company balance sheet, but I can tell you that last year, the company booked more than 20 billion real in revenue. A billion? What exactly is a billion? It's a number, officer. A big one. 
What is it made of? It's made of one thousand millions. A million is made of a thousand thousands. I thought, that's it? I thought Wild Pines was supposed to be big time. And to think, there are years when the group books losses in the billions. Wild Pines employs 72,000 people, all of whom have families that depend on their salaries. It is a tremendous responsibility. Where does uh, Wild Pines get all these billions? They started as an exploration and cargo fleet conducting trade between the Samaran and Insulindian Easterlers. 250 years ago, when pine ships explored the South Seminese and charted Lormantang on behalf of the suzerain. Centuries of care, deliberation, and madness have gone into this endeavor. Vessels pass through the great unrest to re-emerge with apricots in tow. The logic of the system is totalizing. It's taken everything from its employees to build it. What does such a huge system want with a place like this? You mean aside from being the terminal's legal owners? Who are responsible for moving 8% of the world's cargo? You don't keep it moving. The workers do. The company is nothing without them. We built this district. All the best parts of it. Rue de saint Gislain with its bastions, the plazas, meteor and mosaic, even some of the old street lamps have been put back thanks to the investments from the WP. Before Martinez was swallowed by the industrial harbor, even before it was part of Revachol, long before Terminal B was erected here, the Pines built it as a resort for its Revacholian employees. A company getaway, for a weekend or a summer holiday, then came the revolution. But well, that's another matter. I'm here to make sure the Pines can fulfill their responsibilities to the place they built. With your help, hopefully, says her warm tone. What? <clears throat> what can you tell me about this strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Wait. What is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Wait. She just admitted that the lynching and the strike are connected. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. So the strike is connected to the lynching? Yes, I believe there is a connection. But that's a subject for later. She's resolute in this. Yet you sense that she wants to tell you. You left the earner trust first. Tell us more about this behemoth. What can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. How were the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making the kind of progress I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the union won significant concessions. 
including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more Whoa, I guess you how could say, significant. What happened to this Gamont? Mr. Clare told him to how did he put it? Fuck off, midget. Gomont is short of stature, you see. Hmm. Okay, then. Yes. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than fair with him and the Union. Sounds like usual aggressive posture. What are their demands? There are leaflets everywhere, and banners. What did they say again? Oh, yes. Every worker, a member of the board. I like it. Then you might also like their other slogan. Demand democracy. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Personally, I don't think it has the same pizzazzo as every worker, a member of the board. What exactly do they mean by it, though? What's the demand? It's quite simple, you see. Every time the Wild Pines group makes a decision about what? About anything, really. It needs the signature of each of the 2,200 workers in its Martinez terminal. Just so you understand, this is but one of 22 terminals owned by Wild Pines. Essentially, not only are they kings of the company, they are also kings of the 72,000 employees of Wild Pines Group. The king is dead. Long live the workers. That may well be. It's not up to me to decide who is king, but as negotiations go, it's not a swell start. What are you going to do? I'm not sure. Naturally, I assume that was just their opening position. A hard-nosed tactic with a side of mockery. But there's been no follow-up, just the same nonsense. And now, people are getting lynched, I hear. Behind the whirling in rags. A disastrous situation if there ever was one. Excuse me, from whom did you hear about this lynching? I first heard it from the boyer at the gates. The one whose very name advertises his aversion to work. I think he said it was, call me manana. This checks out. Tell me about this union boss, Mr. Clare? Everett Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everard is fantastically corrupt. I imagine he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. If you were to prick him with something sharp, you could see it oozing out. A knife, maybe? No, a rapier. You sound like you're about to take a rapier to him. Oh, heavens no. We get along just fine. Yet, now that you mention it, I can't stop imagining that black treacle just dribbling down his double chin. Is he that bad? He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of them? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the Union itself outside the Brothers Clare? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act. But they did it. I can respect that. 
Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The brothers Claire came and transformed it into a... How do you say? A mob. The debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. Refreshingly honest, officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask. I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Would you say the Debardeurs Union is... An effective advocate for the rights of local workingmen. Why do you think so? Between Everard, the human leech, and Measurehead, this union sounds like a motley crew. I'm into it. Well, I suppose that's one way to look at it. They're an interesting composition, albeit vile. But enough about Everard. What else can I do for you? One more thing. You said something happened in the elections? I'm glad you asked. There was a woman, the previous forewoman of the Union. She disappeared. Disappeared? Yes. On the last day of the local chapter elections, her daughter phoned in and said she wasn't running anymore. Or coming to work. Ever. End of story. This forewoman, her name? This forewoman, her name? Sadly, the company records do not even give a name. She's just four women in private correspondence. Holly, I don't even know if it's a sir or given name, and I don't have access to the Union's files. Eerie. Downright haunting, if you ask me. The Wild Pines suspected foul play, but what could they do? It was a Union matter. The point of the presentation is, these kinds of things happen around the Clares. Watch out when you're dealing with him. Thank you for your concern, ma'am. We'll be just fine. That's all I need here. Let's change the topic. Of course. How else can I help? What can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi from Precinct 57. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Remember my, when my partner told you I'd suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So, are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? It's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life. And the world. Oh dear. <sighs> I suppose this does explain some of the more curious turns in our conversation. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional. But he is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize. But I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. I mean, favors for favors. A dirty alliance of some sort. Then I'll find it somehow. Let's talk about something else until I do. Of course. But before we do, officers, let me be perfectly clear. The situation is extremely volatile. The sooner we can speak about this lynching business, the better for all of us. Do you have... Do you... <clears throat> do you know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. So you know something about the tattoos. Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. 
I hope there is something else I can... She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. Thank you. That's all for now. Of course, detective. Hey. Psst. Who, me? Yes, you. Word on the street is you're ready to start building communism again. How come there's word on the street? You keep saying things like down with the bourgeoisie, eat the rich, sodomize the landowners, impel all people who have more than 25 real in their pockets, literally murder all human beings regardless of their political beliefs, that kind of stuff. I've said some mildly left-wing things, but none of those. Oh yes, the mass of ambivalence. Don't deny it. You're about to rip it off and reveal the monstrous seven-eyed lamb of global communism that would devour and masticate mankind. Everyone can see that. So tell me, do you have any questions before we fire up the big communism builder? Or do we get right down to it? I'm gonna roll up my sleeves and start building communism. Oh baby. yeah, get the firing squads and the animal wagons ready. Wait, what? You firing squads? You didn't say anything about those. Too late to back out now. You can't make an omelet without breaking a few million eggs. <sighs> Guillaume Lemillion. Bad news. Guillaume Lemillion did not become a cop. In 38, he went on a tour to the Sinyao province in Safre, where he died of auto-erotic asphyxiation. His body was found hanging from a decorative dragon tree in his junior suite amid drug paraphernalia, unwholesome objects, and the Sylvia Trainer single, Wonderland, skipping in the background. And yes, you can take this as a metaphor for Revishov in the 30s. And also as a warning. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, I can't internalize that. Reaction speed. Oh yeah, and uh, this is the end of episode um, five of Disco Elysium. Thanks for stopping in. Like and subscribe.